Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about garage door maintenance, and we'd like to thank Barry Cade for liking and sharing the podcast. The inventor credited with developing the first sectional garage door was C.G. Johnson in 1921. And to sell his doors, he built a small model onto the back of his Model T Ford, and he drove it around the country to sell the doors to distributors. His original factory was in a thousand square foot building, and he could make one door a day. Wow. And his company became the Overhead Door Company. What are the different materials that garage doors are made of? Steel is going to be the most common material for a garage door. When I looked at my local home centers, steel was the only material in their stocked inventory. Steel is durable, comes in a range of styles. You can also get steel with a composite or polyester coating. There are aluminum doors with glass panels, aluminum with fiberglass, wood, and wood with a vinyl or composite coating. Okay. How long do garage doors last? The garage door company Amar says garage doors should last 15 to 30 years. A single layer steel door should last 15 to 20 years. A triple layer steel door can last 25 to 30 years. Aluminum doors can last 30 years. And the overhead door company says a well-maintained wood garage door should last 20 years or more. If you live in a climate with extreme temperatures, high humidity, heavy rain, snow, or if you're in a coastal area with salt in the air, it can shorten the life of your door if you don't keep up with regular maintenance. What are some things that a homeowner should check on the garage doors routinely? The garage door manufacturer Wayne Dalton recommends inspecting your garage door at least once a year. Pay attention to any grinding or scraping noises that could be caused by worn rollers, loose hardware, misaligned tracks, dirt in the tracks, or lack of lubrication. As part of your yearly maintenance, check and tighten all of the hardware, and you're going to need a socket wrench. Screws and bolts should be tight, but not over-tightened, and you can use a thread locker on any bolts that are connected by a nut or go into a threaded hole. What is a thread locker? It's a liquid that you put on the male thread of a bolt. It fills the gap between the threads. The metal-to-metal connection to the nut or the threaded hole and the lack of air triggers the liquid to harden and lock the bolt in place. So it's going to help prevent vibration from loosening the connection. Okay. And thread lockers come in low, medium, or high strength. Medium strength allows you to disassemble the parts with a standard tool where high strength is for a permanent connection and usually requires an impact driver to loosen the parts. Okay. Some top-rated thread lockers are from Loctite, that's L-O-C-T-I-T-E, and Permatex, P-E-R-M-A-T-E-X. Okay. Back to what you should check on the garage door. The garage door company Clope recommends lubricating all moving parts with a silicone-based lubricant. Don't use grease. It can attract and hold dirt. Hmm. Wayne Dalton recommends lubricating moving parts every six months with a lubricant labeled for garage doors. They say don't use WD-40 because it can remove the grease packed around bearings. Hmm. It can also damage nylon rollers. Lubricate the rollers where they attach to the shaft. Lubricate the hinges. Lubricate the shaft for a torsion spring and lubricate the entire torsion spring if that's the type of spring you have. Okay. What are the types of springs on a garage door? The most common type is a torsion spring. It's mounted above the garage door on a shaft, and the shaft is connected to cables that attach to the bottom of the garage door. And you're going to have one or two springs depending on the size and the weight of your garage door. It supports the weight of the door, so it can be easily lifted by hand or a garage door opener. The other type of garage door spring is an extension spring, and these are located on the sides of the garage door, and they're connected to a pulley system and cables that attach to the bottom of the door. 
Garage door springs will have to be replaced at some point. Clopay says most garage door spring systems are designed to last 10,000 cycles. And one cycle is the door opening and then closing. Okay. So it should last 8 to 12 years, depending on how much you use your door. Hmm. Torsion springs are under high tension, and they should only be replaced by a professional. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says about 30 people die every year from garage door accidents, and a majority of the deaths are from torsion springs. Wow. What else should a homeowner check on the garage door? Check the cables that attach to the bottom of the door for any signs of fraying or damage. If they look damaged, have them replaced. These are under extreme tension and can be dangerous if they break free. Hire a professional to replace and adjust the cables. Okay. Clean off the inside of the tracks with a damp cloth. If the tracks are dirty and filled with grease, you can use a damp cloth with a mild detergent or an all-purpose cleaner. Don't lubricate inside of the track because it can attract dirt. Just lubricate the rollers. Okay. Check and clean the photoelectric sensors if you have a garage door opener. There'll be a transmitter on one side of the garage door and a receiver on the other side of the door a few inches above the ground. Wipe off the sensors and make sure they're facing each other. Test that they're working by opening the door, then use the remote to close the door. As it's closing, place your foot or an object like a broom in front of the sensors. The door should reverse if it's working properly. If it's not working, check the wiring, the alignment, make sure they're both facing each other at the same height, and the sensors are clean. Sometimes the system can be reset by unplugging the opener for a few minutes, and then you'd have to replace the sensors if they're not working. Okay. Direct sunlight on one of the sensors can also prevent the door from closing. Hmm. Can you tell if your sensors are bad? If your garage door opens but it won't shut, or if the door stops and reverses direction, the sensors are usually the problem. Okay. For many openers, if you hold down the wall button inside the garage until the door is down, it will usually stay down until you can fix the sensors, which is a quick fix if you have to get to work and you don't want to leave your garage door open. Right. (laughs) You could also use the release cord on the opener. Right. The cord disconnects the opener from the door. The best way to use the release cord is when the door is closed. If it's in the open position and you pull the cord, a heavy door can come down very fast, potentially damaging your door. Hmm. The release cord is great if the power goes out or if the opener stops working so you can get your car out of the garage. Once you release the opener from the door, you can open and close the door by hand, but be careful not to get your fingers between the panels. Right. How do you reset the opener? Close the door fully, then pull the cord up and back the opposite direction until it clicks in place. Then use the wall button or remote to make sure it's connected. Along with the photoelectric sensors to help prevent the door from closing on someone, your opener will have a pressure sensor. To check the pressure sensor, open the door and put a 2x4 or similar piece of wood or a brick under the door. Then you're going to hit the remote to close the door. When the door comes in contact with the object, it should reverse and open. All garage door openers manufactured after 1992 are required to have a photoelectric and pressure sensor to prevent injuries, especially for kids and pets. If the door doesn't reverse, have the opener inspected. Okay. What else should be checked on the garage door? Clopay recommends checking the balance of your garage door. To check the balance, pull the door's opener release handle and lift the door halfway open. If the door is balanced, it will stay in place. An unbalanced door will open or close by itself because the spring's tension is too high or too low. Hmm. An unbalanced door will reduce the life of your garage door opener and it puts extra wear on the springs. Call a professional to balance the door and adjust the springs. Mm -hmm. If your garage door opener has a battery backup, test it regularly because you're going to have to replace the battery every few years. Check your manual for the maintenance tips for your model. Okay. Also change the battery in your remote every couple of years. If your garage door opener has a belt or a chain, check that it isn't sagging more than a half an inch. If it's sagging too much, it can damage the opener. 
You want the chain or belt to have a slight sag of about a quarter inch, but check your manual for the recommended sag or space between the chain or the belt and the rail. All right. For most garage door openers, there's a nut connected to a threaded rod that holds the belt or the chain, and turning the nut will tighten the chain or belt. But check the manual for your model. The chain on a chain drive garage door opener should be lubricated with a silicone-based lubricant or a product labeled garage door lubricant. The garage door opener company Genie recommends a white lithium-based grease to lubricate their screw drive openers. One article I read said Genie and Chamberlain doesn't recommend lubricating the belt on a belt drive garage door opener. Hmm. Just wipe it down and keep it clean. But check the manual for the recommended maintenance for your model and drive type. Okay. What if you have a bad roller on the garage door? It's pretty easy to replace. For most doors, the hinges have a tube that the shaft on the roller sets into. There'll be a bracket on top with a roller on each side, and there'll be a bracket on the bottom with a roller on each side. For all the rollers connected to the hinges and the top brackets, just remove the screws holding the hardware in place. You're going to pull off the hinge or the bracket, pull out the roller, then slide in a new one and reattach the piece. Hmm. You never want to remove the bottom rollers. The bottom bracket is attached to cables that are under a lot of tension. You'd hire a professional to replace those rollers and then adjust the cables. Okay. And before you work on rollers, you should unplug the opener so it doesn't accidentally open or close on you. Good idea. What are some tips for maintaining the garage door's exterior? Wayne Dalton says to clean a pre-finished steel garage door, mix one cup of a mild detergent that contains less than 0.5% phosphate with five gallons of warm water. Wipe down the door with a soft cloth or sponge dipped in the solution, then wash the weather strips around the door. Rinse, then dry off the door with a damp chamois. Never use a pressure washer. Don't use bleach. Don't use window cleaners or solvent-based cleaners. Hmm. To clean a wood garage door, mix one cup of a mild detergent in five gallons of warm water, then wipe the door down with a soft cloth or sponge dipped in the solution. Rinse well, then allow it to air dry. Okay. Clope recommends cleaning, then waxing any interior or exterior metal garage door surfaces twice a year to preserve the finish. Waxing helps prevent rust and maintain the finish. Clope's suggestion to clean a metal garage door is to spray the door with a garden hose sprayer to get the surface wet first, then use a sponge or cloth dipped into a mild detergent solution to wipe down the door. Use the garden hose to rinse off the door, then use wax to coat the surface. They recommend a spray wax to make the job easier. Hmm. But read the care and maintenance manual for your model. Right. Some decorative hardware can be discolored from wax, so check your manual. And don't wax an anodized aluminum garage door. Okay. For doors with polycarbonate windows, they recommend cleaning the windows with Joy, Top Job, or Palmolive liquid. Some top-rated mild detergents for cleaning are Dawn and Simple Green. What should you do if you have rust on the bottom of your garage door? It's pretty common for the bottom panel of a steel garage door to rust over time, especially the bottom corners where moisture can collect. You want to remove any rust, then prime and paint the steel to prevent it from creating a hole. You can use sandpaper, emery cloth, or a sanding sponge to remove surface rust. For heavily rusted areas that are flaking and pitted, you'll need to use a scraper and a wire brush. And wear an N95 mask whenever you're sanding or scraping to protect your lungs. Right. What if there's a hole in the door from the rust? An automotive body filler is a durable product that will fill a hole in a metal door, and then you can just sand it smooth. Hmm. Auto body filler is a two-part product. If your door has a solid foam insulation, you should be able to fill the hole and smooth it flush to the outside panel. But if you don't have a backing, you can use a fiberglass cloth behind the hole and glue it in place with a thin coating of the filler and let it dry so it has something to hold on to. Okay. But read the application instructions for the product that you're using. 
Wayne Dalton recommends using a high-quality metal primer on any surfaces with exposed metal before you repaint. And there are also primers for rusty metal that help prevent rust. Some top-rated rust preventer primers are Kills Adhesion Interior Exterior Primer, and Kills is K-I-L-Z, Fix-All Alkid Fix Rust Primer, and Benjamin Moore Ultra Spec Acrylic Metal Primer. Make sure to read the application instructions before you purchase the primer to see what type of paint it's going to work with. Okay. To paint a garage door, Benjamin Moore recommends using an acrylic exterior paint and apply it with a synthetic bristle paintbrush labeled for acrylic paint. Use a roller cover with synthetic fibers like polyester or a polyester nylon blend. Use a short nap 3 8 inch roller for smooth surfaces and lightly textured surfaces. Use the brush to cut in around edges and window panes then use the roller for large, flat areas. Disconnect the garage door from the opener by pulling down the release cord so it can be moved up and down as you work. Scrape any loose chipping paint, remove rust and corrosion, then fill any holes. Wear an N95 mask when you're scraping and sanding paint. Lead-based paint wasn't banned until 1978, mm. so you need to be careful when you're sanding paint on older homes. Follow the EPA guidelines if you're unsure if there's lead in the paint. Right. You can search online for Lead Safe Renovations for DIYers, U.S. EPA, and they'll have tips on how to work safely with old paint that could contain lead. Cool. Use a sponge to scrub the door with an all-purpose cleaner, then rinse it thoroughly. Lightly sand the old finish and sand down rough edges of chip paint. Rinse off the sanding dust and allow it to completely dry. For metal doors, spot prime bare metal with an acrylic metal primer. Tape off windows, trim, and hardware. Use drop claws to protect the areas around and under the door. Use a high-quality exterior acrylic primer starting at the top of the door and working down. Cut in all the edges and trim with a brush, then roll the flat surfaces. Follow the recommended dry time on the label for the primer. Most projects are going to look the best with one coat of primer and two coats of paint. Hmm. Benjamin Moore recommends an outdoor acrylic paint because it will stand up to the expansion and contraction that a door goes through from temperature changes. Okay. Wayne Dalton says when painting a wood door, the finish coat must be the same as the primer coat. A latex-based finish paint is recommended for use over a latex-based primer, and an oil-based finish paint is recommended for use over an oil-based primer. Okay. Prime the interior and exterior surfaces as well as the edges using a paint approved for the specific species of wood being finished. Some species of wood, like cedar, require special primers and finishes to prevent tannin stains from appearing. Hmm. If the door is factory primed by Wayne Dalton, the priming step isn't required, unless touch-up is needed due to surface prep or resanding. Wayne Dalton uses a latex primer, so a latex finish paint is required. Paint the interior and exterior surfaces as well as the edges with at least two coats of paint over the primer. Follow the paint manufacturer's label directions completely for all the coatings. Okay. For clear or stained finishes, Wayne Dalton recommends applying an exterior grade stain approved for the species of wood being finished to the interior and exterior surfaces as well as the edges following the manufacturer's label directions. The stain selected must be compatible with the urethane finish that will be used to finish the door. After the proper drying time for the stain, apply one coat of the urethane finish to the interior and exterior surfaces as well as the edges. After the recommended drying time for the first coat, sand with a fine 320 grit sandpaper, clean the surfaces of the sanding dust, and apply a second coat of the urethane to the interior and exterior surfaces as well as the edges. After the second coat is dry, 
sand with a fine 320 grit sandpaper again. Clean all the surfaces of the sanding dust and apply a final third coat. Three urethane finish coats are required for a durable finish. Okay. Only a urethane finish is an approved top coat for a stained or a natural door. Other types of top coat finishes, including deck sealers, are not acceptable and, if used, will void the warranty. And do not stain MDO plywood doors. Apply paint only. Okay. What is MDO plywood? MDO plywood is used for some garage doors. It stands for medium density overlay. MDO plywood is made by layering thin wood veneers perpendicular to each other, and in between each veneer, a layer of waterproof resin is applied, then everything is fused together with heat and pressure. The surface is coated with a waterproof resin impregnated fiber, making MDO plywood an outdoor-rated, weather-resistant, very durable material, but MDO plywood can't be stained, it has to be painted. Okay. You mentioned insulation. Should you insulate your garage door if it doesn't have any? The Bob Vila website says if you have an attached garage and add insulation to an uninsulated garage door, it can keep the temperature inside your garage 10 to 12 degrees warmer in the winter Hmm. and up to 20 degrees cooler in the summer, which can help reduce the energy costs for your home. Also check the weather strip under and around your door and replace it when needed. If you have a large gap under your garage door, the Garadry Weather Stop Garage Door Threshold comes in a variety of thicknesses to stop water, drafts, and pests from getting under the garage door Hmm. if the bottom seal isn't doing its job. Okay. I had a garage with a concrete slab that had sunk a little on one side Hmm. so the door wouldn't set flush on one side. And I put one of their thresholds under the door, and it completely blocked the gap. And I stopped catching mice in the garage. Wow, very exciting. (laughs) You want to spell that? Garadry is G-A-R-A-D-R-Y. Cool. What are some top-rated garage door companies? Clopay, it's C-L-O-P-A-Y. Wayne Dalton, it's W-A-Y-N-E. Capital D A L T O N, Amar, A M A R R, and Overhead Door. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? Have a yearly routine to look at your garage door. Keep the tracks clean and the moving parts lubricated. Hire a professional if you have problems with the springs and the bottom rollers. And when I was reading some troubleshooting tips for garage door openers, I read that some LED light bulbs can interfere with the garage door opener Hmm. because they create an electromagnetic field that can disrupt the signal sent by the garage door opener remote. (laughs) Wild. Look for an LED bulb marked garage door opener safe. They're designed to reduce the interference with garage door remotes, stand up to vibration, moisture, and cold temperatures in the garage. Cool. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 19 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank <laughs> you.